I always wondered what would happen if I juiced up an Arctic P12 and got it spinning at around 3000 RPM. But then Arctic went and released the Arctic P12 Max, so I guess I won't need to blow up one of my P12s to see what would actually happen. Which is kind of cool. But blowing up a fan could also be kind of cool. Subscribe if you want me to do that. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. To have full disclosure, I did buy this fan myself to test and review, so all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button, and if you really like the video, how about subscribing to the channel? And yes, YouTube does make me say that pretty much every video. They send me emails, over and over and over. I would like to take a minute and thank my patrons for supporting the channel. Thank you very much. If you would like to support the channel via Patreon, there is a link down in the description. Okay, let's take a quick look at the Arctic P12 lineup. And as most of you probably already know, there are quite a few fans in this lineup. There is the P12, which has a three pin connector and a max rated RPM of 1800. There is the P12 TC, which has a three pin connector, a max rated RPM of 1800, and a temperature lead that controls the speed of the fan, i.e. temperature control TC makes sense, right? There is the P12 Silent, which has a three pin connector, but a max rated RPM of only 1050. There is the P12 Slim PWM PST, which does have a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 2100, a built-in fan splitter, and a 15 millimeter profile. There is the P12 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 1800. There is the P12 PWM PST, which has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 1800, and a fan splitter built in. There is the P12 PWM PST ARGB, which has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 2000, a fan splitter built in, and an ARGB lead for the ARGB LEDs. There is the P12 PWM PST CO. So this has a dual ball bearing bearing, a four pin connector, a max rated RPM of 1800, and the built in fan splitter. Finally, there is the P12 Max, which has a four pin PWM connector, and a max rated RPM of 3300. So yes, I did test the Arctic P12 Max, and as I just said, it has a max rated RPM of 3300. Its minimal RPM is zero, because it does have a zero dB mode. There are five fins, but all the fins are connected, so take that as you will. It is a fluid dynamic bearing, and it does have Arctic's standard six year warranty. Now, before getting onto the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear that this is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't the exact performance you'll get, but it does give you a pretty good representation on what to expect from a P12 Max. Okay, starting with the PWM range. So with the motherboard set to 100% PWM, this fan has an RPM of 3570, so a fair bit over the 3300 rated RPM. At 50% PWM, this fan had an RPM of 2200-ish. At 0% PWM, the fan stopped spinning, so an RPM of zero. Now the fan did kick on at only 3% PWM, with the motherboard showing the RPM at 370-ish. So the P12 Max does have a really good RPM range. Now before going on to my standardized testing, if you are appreciating all the work that I've done here, could you please support the channel by using the Amazon Associate links that I have in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Now, if you do have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video. I go over the how and what's there. Uh, there will be a card along the top and I will also have it linked in the description. But please note, I have updated the cooler that I use for the CPU cooling performance to the Frost Commander 140. This way I can test 140 and 120 millimeter fans on the same cooler. Okay, as always, starting with the DBA and RPM. At four volts, I measured the DBA of this P12 Max at 32.8. 
and that had an RPM of 1360. At six volts, the DBA went up to 36.2, and that had the RPM at 2010. At eight volts, I measured a sound level of 42, and that had the RPM at 2585. At 10 volts, I measured a sound level of 47.2 dBA, and that had the RPM at 3080. Finally, at 12 volts, the dBA went up to 51.9, and that had the RPM at 3520. Okay, now for the sound recording at each of these voltages, but first the ambient room noise for your reference. Moving right along to the airflow testing. As usual, I left the DBA numbers up on the chart for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, the FPM of this fan was at 205. With the mesh panel, the FPM was at 195. And with the covered panel, the FPM was at 80. Jumping up to 12 volts. With no obstructions, the FPM of this fan was at 620. With the mesh panel, the FPM was at 595, and with the covered panel, the FPM was at 345. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. So at four volts, the CPU's average steady state temperature was at 79C. At six volts, it was at 74.8C. At eight volts, it was at 73.8C. At 10 volts, it was at 72.7C. And at 12 volts, it was at 71.8C. Okay, I will be comparing the Arctic P12 Max to the Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4 120, the Thermalright TL B12 Extreme, Extreme, and the Noctua NF F12 IPPC 3000. I will also be showing the Arctic P12 PWM PST for reference, just so you understand how much more air this thing's actually moving. So when comparing the P12 Max with these other fans, we see the Thermalright B12 Extreme and the P12 Max having matching DBA at each voltage, with the F12 being louder and the Pro 4 being a bit quieter. On to airflow. So when voltage equalized and with no obstructions, the P12 Max moves a bit more air than the Pro 4 does and a bit less air than the F12 does, with the B12 Extreme moving the most amount of air. With the mesh panel, things look pretty much the exact same. There's a small performance drop across all the fans, some a bit more than others, but no real change in the overall ranking. In the covered panel testing, there is a large FPM drop across all the fans. However, again, no real change in the overall rankings. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. So with the fans voltage equalized and the chart zoomed in, all of these fans do a really good job at cooling a CPU. Moving on to the 34 dBA testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if they don't actually get up to 34 dBA. With no obstructions, the P12 Max had an FPM of only 265, which isn't great when compared to the 365 of the P12 PWM PST. With the mesh panel, the P12 Max had an FPM of 260. Then with the covered panel, the P12 Max had an FPM of 130. So what do I think of the Arctic P12 Max? Based on pure or raw performance, it's a really good price to performance fan, meaning the overall performance is really good. But that is what this fan is all about, is the overall performance. Because as you saw in the 34 dBA charts, the FPM of the P12 Max was much lower than the P12 PWM PST and that's likely to do with the blade design. The P12 Max has all the blades connected one to like all together around the outside, and this is likely to help with support when it's spinning at 3500 RPM that the standard P12 doesn't have to deal with when it's only spinning at 2000-ish RPM. So yeah, it it's, helps with support of the fan not like imploding on itself, 
but obviously it creates some sort of turbulence, which means more noise. However, if you are looking for a high performance fan, the Arctic P12 Max would be a good choice. Is it the best choice? That's hard to say for sure, but likely not in my opinion that is. And that's because the B12 Xtrem and the Pro 4 have better noise to performance levels while still moving similar amounts of air at the like 12 volt high performance levels. Now, yes, the Pro 4 is more than two times the price, but the B12 Xtrem is actually the same price. So I guess it really does come down to on, do you prefer thermal right or do you prefer Arctic? So yeah, um, I don't really know what else to say. It's a good fan. It works for high performance. If you're looking for something like that is quiet and works well being quiet, probably not what you should be looking for. And I guess I'll leave it at that. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. I, it is completely free to join. I do put most of my charts up on the HFG Discord server so that you guys can actually see them. Now you do need to be a member to actually see them, but it is again, free to become a member. All you have to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to see everything. Uh, there is Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a special thank you to my patrons. Uh, and there is a link down in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. It should be along the same lines as this video you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.